Ladies and gents, welcome. This is a real treat. I'm here in uh, Gestad for the launch of the new Polo watch from Piaget. And um, I can tell you right now, this is not my normal Monday morning setup. The backdrop is snow peaks and we've got a, a, all sorts going on. I've got a wonderful guest here with you, a man with 20 plus years at Piaget, um, Mr. Jean Bernard uh, Foreau. Lovely to see you, Molly. Thank How you. How are you? <laughs> nice. Great. Head of, head of the um, uh, patrimony uh, de department at Piaget, yeah. of course. Um, which has become more and more prevalent in the last few years as the brand has developed um, in popularity and people are looking back at the, the archives of Piaget. Yes. But, 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 but Jean-Bernard, give us a, a brief, for those who are not familiar maybe with what the patrimony department is, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, the patrimony, in fact, uh, is devoted to the brand equity. So mm -hmm. what we do is to try to work with the archives, with the private collections, and also to try to um, create some storytelling for the creative department, for the marketing, for the sales team, uh, to, to highlight the value and also to emphasize the distinction of Piaget. Mm -hmm. So because we are talking about pieces or archives that belong to the past, and they are testimony uh, and reason why uh, today Piaget is still there and why we are able to celebrate 150th anniversary. Give us a brief on, on Piaget as a brand because you know, it's got this confluence, hasn't it, between jewelry, uh, bespoke jewelry making, um, and, and and watchmaking, yes, ultra thin watchmaking, and, yeah. and historically was a supplier to other brands. So just Absolutely. give us a quick brief on Piaget and its history. Yes, Piaget, in fact, started in 1874 with our founder Georges Edouard Piaget, who started uh, as a highly skilled uh, watchmaker, and uh, thanks to the success during two generations of uh, manufacturing movements, components, and sometimes watches which were not signed before 1943, Piaget uh, developed a strong reputation on the tracing movement. Then with the third generation, uh, they created the brand, the trademark of Piaget, and started to focus even further on ultracine movement, revealing two key legendary movements, the 9P and the 12P. The 9P is self-winding and the 12P is automatic winding. And this achievement, uh, in one way, opened the door to a new creativity for the brand. Then the family decided to focus only on noble material, gold and platinum. So once you work gold, you attract jewelers mm. in your workshop. Mm. And jewelers open the door to a more jewel watches for both male and female. Piaget was also interested to add the color. But at Piaget, color is material, so when you want blue, you don't paint or don't, you don't enamel, but you choose, for instance, turquoise or lapis lazuli. When you want green, you would think about jade or malachite. So the family developed a new grammar of style, which was a bit unusual for a watchmaker, if you could see about the competition. Piaget was legitimate thanks to ultrasin movement and add a layer, for instance, of creativity, opening the door to the conception that at Piaget, a watch is not only a time instrument, is also a jewel. Mm -hmm. So a jewel not just as a bijou, but a jewel as an ornament for men and women uh, that will be finally a resonance to, well, your, in one way, distinction, but also self-expression. Mm. And that's why the Polo, uh, which was launched in 1979, is also um, the fact that the family used to travel a lot especially in the U.S. because in the 70s, the U.S. is a huge market. And Piaget understood that the creativity they had of dress watches and sometimes also ultrasin which, watches, that, which were sliding under your... Uh, cuff. Yes, very, very, very easily, <laughs> uh, was a bit much more too evening-oriented and that in the U.S. the luxury and the lifestyle was more daily, was more sport chic, mm -hmm. especially when you live under the sun, like in Florida or like in Los Angeles, so that there was an appeal for something new. And then they decided to create their sport chic watches, which uh, is only in gold, mm -hmm. huh, because uh, Piaget time is only measured in gold at that time. <laughs> and what, this, what they have been working before with the American market is that all the advertising of Piaget in the US was Piaget is the most expensive watch in the world. So when they came with this model, in one way, in the perception of the clientele or um, in the, uh, I would say, uh, um, mind of the, of the people, Piaget was a very high-end brand mm -hmm. known by, I would say, some elite or people that used to have some wealth. And this watch, in one way, uh, I think is also 
because today we don't talk about this way, but at that time it was a status social watch. Mm -hmm. So when you wear this watch, it means something. Mm -hmm. And when I was discussing with Monsieur Piaget about the name, because this is the first watch given a name, given a name, because as I understand it, the American import Absolutely. partner wanted a name for yes. the product. Because because at Piaget, at, before it was a style. You wear a Piaget. Mm. It's a Piaget style. So when you when you look about Piaget advertising uh, during the beginning of the 60s to the end of the 60s, most of the time it's seven or eight watches, sometimes uh, one onto the other, uh, all a bit different, but all with the same signature of gold bracelet or gold craft or with color or with some Marquis cut diamonds or stones all around. So you have a style, but the US market said, okay, in the US you need a name. And Monsieur Piaget has started since 1976 to sponsor Polo. Uh, in, yeah. in New York first and in Los Angeles. Okay. And so he understood, because something he told me, that if you have time to go to see polo tournaments, if you sometimes uh, carry a, a team, uh, it's neat, it means that you need a lot of money because all the ponies, just to take care of them, it's very expensive. So if you have the money to handle this, you have the money to buy such a watch. <laughs> That's why he was really interested by the polo not only the players, but also the spectators, the people who were attending and mm, uh, mm. watching at the, at the polo tournaments. And then talking with the agent, in, uh, in, which is Greenberg in, uh, in, uh, at that time uh, for, for Piaget in the US, they decided that polo should be uh, the name and uh, because the code name of this watch before polo was Sporting. Sporting at Piaget level, and not internally. It's internally, internally, it's an brand. internal code. It's not. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not at all a brand, a trademark. Huh? It's and sporting. If we take ourselves back to the seventies, we've got the launch of a number of sports watches in, in steel. Yeah, yeah. In steel, so it would have been a. You know, this was late nineteen seventies. Yes. That Piaget came, but they came with something almost entirely different in that yeah. sense. Um, uh, you mentioned the fact that these elite uh, individuals would have been aware of Piaget yeah. in the States particularly. Yes. How would they have encountered Piaget? Would they have had jewellery bespoke made by the company or how well, would they have encountered them? Well, in fact, uh, what was very important is that Piaget has always been seen in gold in the United States and uh, that Piaget was also sold for uh, some high-end watches through a retail network of high-end jewellers. So Piaget, instead of choosing, for instance, normal watch wall seller, was using Tiffany, Cartier, Van Clef and Arpel, Aspre in London, to carry their watches. So in the, in the image of the clientele, Piaget was considered to be at the level of this wonderful maison, which a high-end reputation, a prestigious approach. And Piaget was not competing because most of those maisons were not able to do full gold or full set diamond watches, while Piaget was able to manage both the movement, the case, the setting, mm. and uh, the gold uh, bracelet or gold meshes, whatever it was. And you know also that Piaget, in that period of time, created cuff watches and swinging sautoirs, something that was another way of wearing time, that was not really in the grammatical approach of some maison, um, of some big jewelers. So Piaget was able to be close to them without competing. Mm. And I think they opened the door to the maison mm. and it uh, created a very high-end reputation among men and women. That's why when this watch was launched, it was launched as a couple offer yes. and uh, both were successful. Yes. And uh, the only difference is that we have sold more female watches. Why? Because we have created more sizes. Mm. You had 19, 22, 24, 26, 28. So the offer was a bit larger, yes. while for male it was more around 34 millimeter. Yeah. And, and actually you can find some watches that are co-signed as well with Van Cleef and Apples on yes, the dial. absolutely. I found out Andy Warhol yes. Piaget's with okay. Van Cleef on you, there as well. Because this, uh, this, uh, today, in fact, we are more compete competing, but at that time, the word in French, I don't know it so well in English, it's confrère. It you were collaborating that, together. Yes, so it means that brands were not in the same competing. It was more, everybody was uh, looking at the others as another expert of some mm -hmm. mastery and uh, with some were more successful according to the time or the collections. But it's true that you have a Bulgarian Piaget, you have Tiffany and Piaget, you have Aspre and Piaget, you have Fred and Piaget. So sometimes on the product, but sometimes also on ads. Mm. We have ads with two names. Mm. And uh, uh, when they were doing sometimes exhibition, uh, well, the two names were together. Mm. So it was a kind of cooperation, where today we are more in competition. So the, <laughs> the world has changed, yes. 
Let's move on to the Piaget itself, because when yeah. it did come out in 79, you had, um, well, the round one came out in 79. As a result, we then saw the square variation, which by all accounts was, was actually more popular at yeah. the time, the square, yeah. um, because the way that this is constructed sort of was seamless, in, in many ways, a bracelet, a, a jewel, yeah. and seamless in, in its integration. Um, it was in quartz at the time. Yeah, definitely. Because at the time, it was the future. Yeah, and because quartz was really popular for the young generation and considered as the smartphone today to be a new technology. So something that is uh, even more precise and uh, easy to wear mm -hmm. because you, you don't have any uh, technical parts. So it's, it was considered to be trendy, I should say. Yeah, and let's talk about the design because it really is a watch unlike anything else on the market. I mean, at the time, clearly it was. Even now, there's nothing that's quite the same as this. The, the structure, the gudrons um, that, that, that emanate through even on the dial and onto the bracelet. It's something quite, quite spectacular. Yes. Well, well, you're right when you are talking about this watch. Monsieur Piaget used to say, it's a bracelet with a watch. Mm. It's not a watch, it's a bracelet mm. with a watch. And uh, this integration of the dial, the case and the bracelet is typical of a Piaget signature. Mm. Piaget used to do it before on some other model. And this one, the, the, uh, I would say the, the genius, it has to be able to, to play on polished, and satin brush, yeah. so to create a light effect, a reflection. So when mm. you wear it, mm. in fact, it, the, the Godrun are capturing the light. Mm -hmm. And as I told you, we are in 79, so 45 years from now. <laughs> so if you have wealth in the US, it's, it's necessary to show it. Because when you, are, <laughs> when you are entering a ballroom or a hotel, you cannot come within with your Maserati. It has to stay outside on the parking. But you can come within the room with your watch, and then people were able to show yes. that they were successful. Today, I think we are in another period of time where success is something that has to be more personal, more individual and less showing off. But at that time, it was considered to, to be, I would say, uh, uh, in, the, um, in, the, in, in the now. It was really what the people wanted to, mm -hmm. to, to, to wear. At what point did we see an automatic caliber come into the polo? Because we, we do see older references of the polo that have automatic on the, on the Absolutely. dial. Absolutely. So in fact, uh, what you have to understand is that uh, the major part of the polo are made with quartz. And uh, for us, we don't have exactly the reason why the family also put some, uh, for instance, the 9P or the 20P in some of our uh, models. We don't have today the answer why they did that, we just, con we just observe through auctions and also through our files and record that uh, they were made. But I don't know if it was a request of some, uh, for instance, uh, wholesalers or if it was a, a wish for the family to offer some distinction uh, or maybe at the end of the 80s. Uh, when uh, the, the watch was existing in quartz, maybe to keep on having some legitimacy on some other movements. But we don't really have the reason because uh, what Monsieur Piaget used to say is that finally this watch was sold that, such as a jewelry piece, so something that you wear, uh, not really taking so much care about the movement mm -hmm. because Piaget on side had all the range of interesting movement watches. So, the, all the legitimacy on very thin uh, movements were available in the boutiques or in the shops. So I think this watch was more a kind of look mm -hmm. uh, and a, a signature. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we've seen variations in the colorways. We've seen two-tone in the past. We've seen ones with straps on, not the bracelet, but straps. Yeah. Did, did clients com commission bespoke Piaget's back then? Do we ever see one of one? Examples? Well, in bespoke on polo, it's more rare. Mm -hmm. We have more bespoke on uh, feminine jewelry watches mm -hmm. uh, because usually, in fact, uh, the, the maison at that time was always uh, very open in terms of collection. So we had, uh, we, have, we even have had, for instance, polo on leather bracelet. Yes. yes. We have had with, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Onyx dial with uh, lapis lazuli dial. We have a different shape in square, a different size, sorry, in shape, uh, well, uh, different size in dimension for square and for round. Mm -hmm. But I think it was more according to the feedback of agents and, uh, and shops to say, okay, we are selling this one very well. We are selling this one less. For instance, I remember Monsieur Piaget told me that the eye of the tiger at the beginning was not selling so well with Polo. Then they decided to create a big, uh, communication campaign and then they were all sold out so I think it was more a reaction of the market you know today we are more forward-thinking uh, there we there are more tools to sell than 
the network, you have all the social media network uh, tools, you have, of course, the boutique, you have the website, uh, mm -hmm. you have a huge range of tools, but at that time, it was more or less the shop. Yeah, and, and his dinners, you know, he'd yeah. get clients together in, yes. in, in places like this Absolutely. and celebrate moments and you'd sell yeah. lots of jewellery. Yes, I think this is a true specificity of the Piaget Maison that uh, was initiated by Yves Piaget, the fourth generation, is to say, well, I understand that our client loves our pieces, but when I'm attending all those dinners, I have the feeling that something is missing. So mm. when he went to Paris, he had the opportunity to go to some musicals and so on, like he would did after with Broadway. And then he understand that it could be interesting to have somebody entertaining the clientele. So at that time, he went to see somebody who was famous. It's Maurice Chevalier. It was a key uh, singer of that time. And he proposed to him to come to Kstadt. Uh, it was at the time in the palace to sing. And Maurice Chevalier had never had the opportunity to come to Kstadt. And what did Yves Piaget? It was not to say, okay, Monsieur um, uh, Maurice Chevalier will be uh, far away on stage. No, no, he was singing among the clientele and then sitting at a table where the client were. And the idea to gather uh, celebrities, clients, and members of the family all together were the beginning of what will become or will be named the Piaget Society. Mm. Because after he will do it in a larger scale on the French Riviera, Italian Riviera, and then he will move it to the state where with the polo he invited uh, the press and the client and the celebrity first in New York before Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. And then he was gathering all those people and allow you, for instance, to be sitting close to Andy Warhol without asking anything. So everybody was welcome in this crew uh, with no hierarchy of people. Mm. Everybody that wanted to enjoy it were there. Mm. Because at that time, nothing was paid. It was really, you were invited, you come or you don't come. But if you come, you, you were it's not a member, but you were a, a, a person that was enjoying the moment with all the other people all around. Very, very cool. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah. The, as you say, it was a status symbol to wear a polo like this yeah. in the 70s, 80s and 90s. Um, to me, the ultimate statement would be to wear or arrive with something like this. Oh, definitely, yes. Now, this is Piaget through and through, this type of thing. What, yeah. what are we looking at here? Yeah, you're, li you're looking at uh, ingot in gold. Yeah. Uh, with a <laughs> secret watch, it's a, it's a toy for male in one way because at that time you know that women used to have secret watches <laughs> and this one uh, has been made and this, this, uh, this number you, you have in your hands belonged to Andy Warhol. This was Andy Yes, Warhol's. so we repurchased it uh, on auction <laughs> in 1988 uh, through Sotheby's uh, and it's, uh, it's a true model that he, he used and it's also show uh, because it's really interesting to see that a, a, a collector with such a taste, because it's one of the king of the pop art, Andy Warhol used to come and buy Piaget before meeting Monsieur Piaget. So it showed that the, the, the creativity of the Maison in the US was already uh, pretty uh, uh, aspirational for uh, high-end pieces. That's why we have had Jackie Kennedy, Elizabeth Taylor, Andy Warhol, Steve McQueen as client of Piaget without having any specific relation with those people. Yep. Then Monsieur Piaget will meet Andy Warhol in 1979 in New York. Yep. And then he will, you know, he will do this interview with uh, Lee Morris in the magazine named Interview for Andy Warhol. And then there will be a relation. But uh, Andy Warhol was a client of Piaget before meeting Monsieur Piaget. Mm. So that's why for us it's, uh, it's very important because it means that the reputation of the Maison was very strong. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the, 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 the era before the ambassadors Absolutely. that we have today. Yeah. True, true passionate collectors, yeah. uh, loving what you, what you did. You, yeah. you, you know, I think it's because you're at the intersection of jewellery, design um, and, and watchmaking. It's a special place. There are very Absolutely. few brands in, yeah. in that intersection. Finally, before we get on to the new watch, what have we got here? Because this is from someone also who, yes. who's highly uh, yeah. interesting. Definitely. <laughs> in fact, uh, uh, Piaget, was, uh, Piaget Polo was a watch but also a collection in which we had cufflinks uh, and in, here in fact it's also an amazing piece uh, that we can discover it looks like a medal but finally there is a surprise like in the lingot from Warhol it's to cut your cigar and uh, I'm I not sure it gets more playboy than that does it yeah, yeah I think it's <laughs> it, it's very funny and what what is amazing is that uh, those ones we just we purchased them recently yep. on auction from Bonhams and it's the personal one of Roger Moore Roger Moore, who is uh, also a very strong actor, which was also um, uh, uh, in Kstadt yep. and also on the, on, on, in Monaco and was uh, attending many, many events of Piaget. Roger attended them. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. 
And, uh, I'd love to have known the reaction to people at the dinner party who probably didn't know who they were going to be sitting next to. Absolutely. And on the left, they've got Roger Moore. On the yeah. right, they've got Andy yeah. Warhol. Yeah. Uh, and so, Mr. Piaget hold, holding the, 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 the table. Yes, but and uh, in, in, in a kind of friendship, because even today, you know, we have photos of that period of time, but the photos were more like uh, reportage photos, so people mm. were not mm. looking at the, uh, at the camera. Mm. Yeah. It was really, well, a live event, and uh, the, the photos were just taken to keep a memory, but uh, mm -hmm. it was not made on purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's true that we are very proud to have those pieces because they tell uh, the story of the maison, the story of the craft, but also uh, the client who wear them, mm -hmm. and why they would wear them, and who, with whom. Mm -hmm. So. Incredible. Did he have that made or was that something that he bought um, as no. part of a collection when buying a watch, for example? Well, uh, he bought them, uh, but not with the watch. It was an, at another moment. And uh, when we, re because we are always looking, for instance, I just tell you something that uh, the Andy Warhol had two polo watches. But in 1988, we missed them during the auction. Mm -hmm. So today we are still interested to find who is having them. So if anyone knows yes. where Andy Warhol's <laughs> Piaget Polo, Polo is, yes, we are very round interested. and square, yeah. yes. one round and one square. Uh, uh, I think they are two square. Two square Piaget Polos yeah. that belong to Andy Warhol. If yeah. anyone's watching this, you've got that in the, in the, in the yes, drawer at home, interested. collecting dust. Yes, we are Piaget interested would in like to purchase those. Them, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because in fact, it's the same thing. It was, okay, we know he had them, but it's interesting to, to have their model, to also have a testimony and a memory for the people. Uh, it can be a collector, it can mm -hmm. be a client, it mm -hmm. can be a newcomer to the Maison, to understand the story and the legend of this watch. Incredible, absolutely incredible. There's, there's a romance to it, there's an elegance, there's, it, 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 you know, it's, and you can't just build that overnight. You no. have to have decades of this, yes. and Piaget it, it, have it. So let's discuss, yes. uh, Jean Bonnet, the, the new watch. Yeah. Yeah. One, let's, let's get that one, one yes. Because in many ways, this is a watch that collectors have been desperately wanting to see for yes. some time, um, both in terms of, of probably uh, an, an upgrade to the movement yeah. and, and a view into the movement, and also a larger size, because you've yes. come out now with one model yeah. that I believe can fit a, a whole myriad of different size wrists, yes. male and female. Uh, definitely. In fact, um, first, what we see that uh, there is a, uh, a family spirit uh, you, you, we recognize it, and I think the first what we see, this is the bracelet and the full integration. It's immediately recognizable at the Piaget watch. Then what we can observe indeed is that it's a bit larger, so 38 millimeter, because at that time 34 for male was enough. Today 38 is great because this is the right proportion that could fit uh, both men and women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then uh, something you can discover also, this is the change in color. Yes. Of gold. Yes. This is 2N and this is 3N. So, sorry. So, you see a bit of difference in color of yeah. gold. Yeah. So, it's key. This one, of course, has a patina because it was it's made aged. 25 years <laughs> ago. So, it's not new, but and this one is new. But, uh, and I think it's interesting to see how uh, it's still uh, very lively today, even 45 years after. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that there is a crown, indeed, because here you had. An, a quartz movement, so uh, with the, the push button behind. Mm -hmm. While here now, but it's maybe a bit difficult to see with the camera, but we have uh, 1200p. Yeah. So, uh, in house caliber, an in house micro caliber. Retail. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's uh, uh, 1200p one. The one is because the micro rotor is in gold mm -hmm. versus uh, the other model that we do where the micro rotor is not in gold. gold. Then also the, the clasps, the, the foldering it's system uh, is really different today. It's more the one of a watch, while before it was more the one of, of a jewelry, jewelry piece. bracelet. Yeah. So we see uh, the evolution. And, uh, and, and also actually, sorry, it's, it's open behind, so you can, can enjoy the you movement. You can enjoy the movement. And, and just for, for those at home watching to fully appreciate why you've gone for a micro rotor movement, that was to ensure the, 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 the thinness. The, yes, the, the, absolutely. Yeah. Because the movement is just a 2.35 millimeter, so mm -hmm. this is a 1200p. And uh, also what is uh, very interesting to, to, to note uh, is that this watch has been made with the tools and the machine tools of uh, two, 2023, while this one was done with the tools and the machine tools of 1978, 79. Yes. Yes. So uh, you have uh, more re reliability. Yes. And uh, this one is waterproof, but this one, of course, uh, all the elements today are more, I would say, accurate mm -hmm. uh, to ensure the resistance and the precision versus the old one, which was very qualitative for 
the time. The time. Yes. But today probably won't win the same test <laughs> as this one. And, and actually, a lot of collectors I speak to out there, you know, feel that that's why they're moving back to modern watches because of that reliability. Yeah. You know, that build quality. Yeah. Unfortunately, as much as vintage watches are charming, yeah. they don't necessarily have that. Yeah. And, and let's talk about the Gaudrons, the structure of the the actual bracelet here, yeah. because it's a really interesting way in which you've put these together, particularly when you look at it from yeah. from the side profile. Yeah, absolutely. So, in fact, uh, the the bracelet has been uh, restored, has been rebuilt completely. Uh, with something which is uh, very key uh, to notice is the fact that the bracelet um, is larger here mm -hmm. and then becoming smaller. To so there's a taper. Yes, to really, in fact, keep uh, the integration uh, of the bracelet within the, the case, mm -hmm. not to have any uh, rupture. Because if you want to win money, you just do a normal bracelet and then you, 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 you will put the case, but then you will lose the integration and the seamless. So uh, we wanted to, to, to really keep uh, what, you, what you discover here. This is the global integration and you have the feeling that it's just a ribbon of gold. Yes. And on the wrist, it certainly feels like that as yeah, well. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's got a reassuring yeah. uh, heft, yeah. as you'd expect. <laughs> and something that you feel because you're wearing it now, First, that it's capturing light, but probably you feel the weight. Yes. So here you have 200 grams of gold, while here you have 130. Okay. Why? Because it's larger yes. than uh, this one. And uh, also because, uh, in fact, you have the buckle at the end, which makes more weight mm. versus this one. Mm. But I think, uh, um, well, for, for me, what, what, what I think it's really interesting here is that finally this is the way it has been designed, it's a signature, this kind of gojun, this kind of integration. And uh, you, you can like it or don't like it, but at least you recognize it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's funny because I've been having conversations that since we announced last night. A lot of people have been getting in touch and we've... It's unlike anything else. It, yeah. it, it is unlike anything yeah. else. And I think brands, you know, understandably try incredibly hard to create something that is recognizable across the right. room. Yeah. But this just, it just, it just pops, doesn't it? Yeah. But I would say in a very subtle way, because I've, I've, I've worn 70s design watches from, from other manufacturers. And because of the polished links or, or, or whatever it may be, they're quite um, loud. Yeah. This is still quite subdued to me. I yeah. appreciate it's a solid yellow gold yeah, watch, yeah. but it's not screaming and shouting. It's, yeah. it's actually quite subdued. Yeah. But I think also it's because, in fact, uh, this reflection is mastered. So the fact that you have uh, some satin brushed, mm -hmm. you know, it's calming. The, and the, more, more satin than yeah, polished. Yeah, they are larger. Yeah. So in fact, you, you have a light reflection, but immediately you have something to calm the reflection. So you, you keep the sparkling, but you are not in the bling bling approach. No. Finally, uh, Jean Monod, we have to just touch on the anniversary. It's 150 year anniversary of Peugeot yeah. this year. Why did you decide to launch this first? Because I bet internally you had lots of discussions. You've probably got lots more to come this year, yes, but you've decided to come out with this right now before Watches and Wonders. Yeah, I think it's uh, because we have decided that uh, the 150th anniversary won't be a chronological, uh, I would say, a celebration starting, for instance, with Ultra Sin and ending, I don't know, with jewelry, but just to say, okay, we will have some uh, strong moment where we will uh, share uh, key uh, stories and key moments of the, of the Maison. And one of the most legendary watch that we have within Piaget, the Polo. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was nice to start with this watch. Uh, as you know, uh, the, the first production is only 79 mm -hmm. uh, units, so it's not a limited edition, but we start with 79 because the name is uh, Polo 79 and then we, we, we can keep on producing some more. But it was also to start with something which is a bit more exquisite uh, with a kind of uh, uh, desirability in terms of design and in terms also of, uh, of creativity. So I think it was nice to start the celebration with uh, uh, such a piece to tell, well, we are going to open the, the year of uh, the 150th anniversary with a design that everybody has consciously or unconsciously in his mind when he think about Piaget. And you're saying there's going to be uh, 69 av 79 available yeah. this year? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so they will hit boutiques at some point this year. Yeah, absolutely. But in fact, it's not a limited edition. It's just the production is a bit limited because, of course, it's a, it's a full gold watch. And then we are also interested in, uh, in producing, in fact, the right quantities. Yes. Um, 
it's hard to believe actually that, 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 that the 150th anniversary has come right now. You must be having a little wry smile at the offices because of the momentum yeah, behind the Asia, you know, the, 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 the genuine passion that, that collectors now have and, and intrigue for the history. Yeah. It must, be, it must be cool to know that you're going into this year in the state that you're in right now. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, in fact, uh, it's something that we prepare for a long time. So we have already thought for a long time how to celebrate, when to celebrate, with what, when, where. And uh, for instance, Kstadt was also a nice memory to what happened in Kstadt uh, with, uh, with the family. Also because Ursula Andres, who was wearing this watch and was the ambassador in 1983 in Palm Beach, she used to have a chalet in, Swa in, in Kstadt too. So uh, it's uh, also the story of all those people meeting yeah. and uh, sharing moments together. Uh, and we love, because there is not a nostalgia, but we love this period because uh, it tells us about a kind of uh, generosity and a kind also of authenticity that we love today in a world where, in fact, we are also submerged by images. So mm -hmm. we like to compensate, in mm -hmm. fact, uh, emotions and image at the same time. And, 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 and I have to say, yeah, you've, you do it very, very well, especially the visuals you've come out with for this new launch yeah. are, are beautiful. Just final question, the price, I believe pound-wise, it's £69,000. Is, is that right, right, the CHF? So I, so I should, you should recheck because I know the price without VAT, so, but uh, according to the market, the currency and the VAT, I, I prefer you check with the, with the <laughs> UK market, yes, <laughs> because I don't want to say something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely spot on. Uh, Jean Bonnet, thank you so much. We could You're chat welcome. all day, but lovely to speak thank to you. you. Really thank a pleasure. You. Thank, thank you. you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, let me know your, your thoughts on this new polo below um, and, 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 and also on Piaget at large. I just... You know, I, I have to, to, I'm sure you can tell the passion's there already, but I have to be honest, I'm super excited about the brand and I'm really excited to see what happens for uh, this year, 150th anniversary. Thanks as always for joining us. Catch you soon. Thank you.